the boxing fans right now I'm chatting on about Randal Monroe versus Scott Quigg this is a good fight to find out who is the number one British super bantamweight and the first thing I've got to say is Scott Quigg is the man on the up he does have a 24 fight record all 24 wins 17 by way of knockout but he has only been at the full 12 rounds once compare that to Randall Monroe the boxing being man he has a 26 fight record 24 wins only 10 by way of knockout and he has been the full distance um, seven times if you look at the major differences between the two records you will find that Randall Monroe has boxed at a much higher level than Scott Quigg in fact Randall Monroe has fought for the WBC title in Japan and lost a unanimous decision however if you watch that fight he did lose most rounds but each of the rounds were competitive he may not have won the rounds but he held his own against the guy who at the time was rated as the number one super bantamweight in the world and has since went on to beat some Argentinian dude and Rafael Marquez so he's still decent and I think he's rated at number two right now in the world if you look at, the, at both boxers stylistically you know they both have some similar characteristics but they have some totally different ones too you know both are very adaptable guys they can adapt to different fights very well they can both box if you look at Monroe he can go out there and pressure the guy he can whip in those body shots and he can work on the inside he can then if he needs to switch to the head with the uppercut and that is where he's most effective you have to admit it he can fight on the back foot if it's necessary and he can counter he can box if the situation calls for it as he's shown in his fight before last you know he's most well known like I said for twice bullying the bully in Kiko Martinez who is a devastating puncher if you watch him and he was never in trouble in that fight he, Kiko Martinez by the way is now the EBU champion and is on the radar for Carl Frampton when you look at Scott Quigg um, to contrast he's good at both fighting from middle distance and then he can switch to the head and from the body as quickly and as freely as he wants and when you compare that to Monroe he's more like a steam train who keeps coming forward whipping in numerous body shots before switching attack to the head more it's not as freely if you understand what I'm trying to say he can switch but it's more of a forced switch he's very happy just doing the same way Quick can also box he can box on the back foot he's shown that against different um, fighters he can mix it up with them up, up front up personal he can go on the back foot like I said but he's only ever done this at British level we're now looking at European to world stage this is a massive jump for a guy who's basically just been fighting guys at British level he's totally missing out European level in my opinion and he's moving on to a guy who is basically a fringe, a fringe world contender there's another one for Quig, you know, he has shown that he can also fight on the inside he can out pressure a boxer like he did with his victory against Jason Booth who unfortunately, if you, you've got to admit it, he was past his Indian summer in his career sorry Jason, I think you're on the slip now but well done on a colourful and exciting career however I'm just going to add in a quick problem here for Scott Quig the main problem is if you watch his fight with Jamie Arthur he can leave himself open and he can be hurt he also had trouble with Gavin Reed in the early rounds and after watching him spar just today with Marco Antonio Barrera I watched that just on my iPad before he does get hit a bit too much then too so I think he needs to tighten up that defense because the boxing bin man will, t will really test that defense I think he's actually the smaller guy going into this fight as well just into my mind then if he's a smaller guy that could be a problem with the pressure fighter in the boxing bin man he's got to be on his toes using a lot of movement a lot like Carl Frampton did okay, one of the main differences between these two guys is obviously the experience like I said boxing bin man has lost his WBC title everyone since then has actually wrote him off called him finished but if you compare his performances before and after the title fight you know there's not mu there's actually not much of a difference maybe he's even performed slightly better I don't know I think he personally has if you look at the guys he's been fighting he's also been fighting fringe world cont contenders too and he's won every single round of each of the two fights that he's had 
one by knockout, one by a decision. It's that's just how it is, you know. And also, this is a big one. He has gone full time as a boxer since ending his career as a bin man. But don't worry, he'll always be a bin man in spirit. Don't throw away those yellow high vis jackets just yet. But back to the you know the real the real issue here about the boxing bin man thing. If he was doing so well at European level, you know, as a part time boxer, you know, doing a job too, and then going to the gym. Now that he's in the gym full time, he can only get better. It can't actually hinder his performance. He can only get better since then. And since then, people have been calling him finished. But he's, like I said, I think he's been a bit better. You know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So how do I think the fight is going to go? And I can only see two. Well, actually, no, there's a number of different ways I can see the fight going. But in my mind, there's two main ways I see this fight going. And that's how I do my, my predictions. I basically see it. I see it flashing before my eyes in my mind and that's what I go with. I might put money on it if it's a good one. Um, I, like I said, I've been wrong before but I've got like a 98% success ratio. I think that's decent. So anyway, yeah, I think this will, this will be how the fight will go. Monroe, who before his WBC title loss was a notorious slow starter, will end up coming out of the blocks firing, catching his man cold and will end up picking the first few rounds up. Quig will start to adjust to him in the middle rounds and try, and try to outbox him, use his combinations, use the switching from body to head. But, like I said, he's only gone the distance once and he won't be able to keep up the high tempo that Monroe will put down for the full 12 rounds. Therefore, I see Monroe rallying in the final rounds, maybe from rounds 9 to 12, and then catching his man cold again, and snatching, and basically forcing a unanimous majority or split decision. So basically a decision, I'll bet on Monroe a decision. The other way I see this going, unfortunately, is Monroe comes out a slow starter like he usually does. He needs one or two rounds to really put the coal in the engine. He's out hustled for the first few rounds. He rallies in the middle rounds, you know, from rounds four to, let's say, nine, okay? So he'll be winning the fight at that point only for his man Quig to rally himself in the final few rounds, put out a few nice combination punches, maybe snatch a few rounds and make it a real nervy decision, which I've got to suspect will go with the favourite, Scott Quig. So basically, if I had to pick one of the two, I'll go with Monroe. Just, I don't think he can afford to be a slow starter in this fight. I think he knows that, you know, I just, that's how I see it going. Monroe is the underdog, and I'll, I will be putting money on the underdog, but not a lot. I'm not 100% confident about either way this fight goes. I just don't see it being a stoppage. So tell me what you think about this fight. Tell me what you think about my prediction. If you disagree with me, disagree with me. It's okay, but, you know, don't be a dick about it. <laughs> so, yeah. Tweet me on the Twitter page or follow the Facebook page. Thanks.